Hey guys, what's up? It's Melanie. Today I'm going to bring you on a journey with me to fulfill a client's dream for an old coffee table that she's had in her storage shed for a super long time. She's been holding on to it, but she had a certain vision for it. She told me what she wanted, and here's my attempt to fulfill everything in her vision. Tell me what you guys think. Watch this journey, and uh, yeah, here we go. As you can see, this is one of those older coffee tables. It's got really good bones, but it's missing probably the glass that was there. I would say marble, but that would have been really thin marble, so let's go with glass. We're gonna go ahead and fulfill her vision. She wanted copper-like plates inside there. She wanted a gray finish, and she wanted white distressed legs. I think we did pretty good, but here we go. We've gotta do a couple different things and use a couple different products. First things first, you can see that some of the original finish is still on here. That's going to make it really rough. So I'm going to go ahead and sand that off so that when I do paint it, she has a nice smooth surface on the top of this coffee table. Whenever you're painting something that has legs like this, it's just a lot easier to flip it upside down. I'm going to use my Thieves Cleaner to clean this up. Thieves is a really good cleaner and it's not toxic at all. It smells super good and I use it to clean in my house. As you can see, oh my God, I've already cut myself. My customer warned me that this had these metal plates or like clips underneath it. She warned me, told me not to cut myself. And uh, yeah, sure enough, I cut myself. So let's back up a step. Let's get these out of there. Okay, time to whip out the beadboard. This is a great white by DIY. I'm gonna go ahead and get going here. It's nice and thick, and it'll only take me two coats to cover all this, which is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and do a test. Let's just do a section of this before we do the whole thing to make sure and check if we're going to have any bleed through. I've learned over time and just doing numerous projects that it's always good just to make sure. I don't like to use my primer unless I have to. So I always kind of do a check and sure enough, can you see that? It's yellow right there. So this guy's gonna bleed on me. So it's time to back up a step. Let's pull out Wise Owl's primer in clear. This will allow me to distress a little bit, still have some of that wood show through because it's clear, but it's gonna block that bleed through for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get a coat of this clear primer all over it. Okay, so I let that dry for about an hour. Now it's time to go back in with my beadboard. As you can see, I'm gonna immediately get full coverage. The primer also helps the paint adhere. So you just, it's like you went back a step, but you also saved a step. It's, it's, it's kind of weird, primer's always good. And yeah, okay, so here we go. cool thing about painting things upside down is then when you flip it back over, you just have the tiniest little bit of touch up to do. With DIY, I'm able to just take a wet rag and clean up the areas that I um, overdid a little bit. Now we're going to go in with letter pressed gray. It's a really, really super pretty gray. I'm going to get a coat on here. The raw wood is going to absorb this really well but you can see where that finish is still super shiny it's not covering all that great so what i'm going to do is just put a light coat on there i'm going to let that dry completely that way when i go back it'll adhere great and i'll get full coverage So second coat, using a gentle stroke, I'm just gonna paint up that super shiny trim on there. For that raw wood on coat number two, I'm gonna go ahead and wet down my wonderful Klingon. Get it wet, and that's gonna really thin out my paint a little bit and really help it to absorb into that raw wood so I don't have to use so much paint and it's super, super smooth. All right, now it's time to create some new panels for these semi-triangle dudes. I went ahead and measured, cut that circumference on one. 
I'm gonna use that one as a template to cut my next three. I most certainly did not get them perfect the first time. I did have to sand a little bit to get them nice and smooth, cut down some of those corners and those rounded edges a little tiny bit. And, um, but yeah, I got them in there. All right, looks pretty cool already. We could honestly just leave it like this, but this is not what she wants. So let's keep going. Meanwhile, I decided to try out the new IOD brick roller. I thought it was the coolest thing. I absolutely hate my staging wall. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm just gonna jump on in there and do it. Well, hindsight is 2020. I probably should have watched a video first. Oops. Seems like everybody has a food weakness. Cheese puffs are mine. Not even sure what they're made of, but I do know that this paint right here, it has chemicals in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the food aside and let's get started with the Modern Masters Primer. I'm gonna take this little spongy dude and get a good coat on there. I've used Modern Masters quite a bit. You do not have to use the primer, but if you want your colors to be super vibrant, it's a good idea. Now remember, she wanted like a rusted copper oxidized look. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out Modern Masters copper, and we're gonna get another coat on here. I like to put my activators into these really cool bottles. So I'm gonna pour my blue activator into that bottle. Now I'm gonna get back out my copper and I'm gonna give it a spritz with my blue activator. That is going to keep it able to be activated. I'm also gonna throw some iron in there and I'm gonna use the iron rust activator that goes with that. Remember that second coat always has to stay wet or it will not activate. So get it on there. I'm gonna spray it all up, kind of make a puddle actually, squeeze it all out and um, see if we can come up with something cool on these panels. Hey, before I forget again, you guys hit that subscribe button for me, please. This is what it looks like while it's doing its thing. I love Modern Masters metal effects and yeah, I think you guys probably know that by now, but it just is so darn cool. Well, I sent a picture to my customer and she wants her gray a little darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some weathered wood and my letterpress gray and um, give the top of this guy a whole nother coat. We wanna give her exactly what she wants. Meanwhile, this reactive paint is um, reacting very well, turning out super cool. Now that we have the shade of gray that she would like, we're gonna go ahead and give this a nice light sanding so it'll be super smooth. Then I'm gonna take a little towel and I'm gonna get all that sanding dust off there before I apply my sealer, super important. Well, I didn't wanna deal with any more sanding powder, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this rag, yes, it's clean, <laughs> and um, wet it down and let's just wet distress these legs a little bit. Wet distressing is a super good way to do it. It's less messy and it looks pretty authentic. Okay, one hour enamel in clear. This is going to be the most durable finish that I could possibly put on this table. It is a coffee table. She does plan to eat on it, use it, and um, eventually spill on it, I am certain. So we're gonna seal this whole bad boy up with one hour enamel in clear. I had started this wall the night before and a snowstorm came. I ran out of this stuff right here and um, I didn't wanna go out in the snow. So I waited till the following day. And being that I'm doing this, I thought I would share it with you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna take this joint compound and I'm gonna apply it to the wall. I believe you're supposed to try to get it, you know, like a steady thickness. 
that I did not do. I just applied it on there in a very haphazard way. I'm going to try to get my roller to line up to where I had it the previous night. I'm just going to kind of turn it and see if I can get those bricks to just keep on flowing. All in all, it took me two and a half jugs of this joint compound so that is a whopping almost $18 uh, really not bad I wanted it to look like it was you know falling down like a super old wall I didn't think I achieved that I might have achieved a um, old crooked wall also but you know it's okay I haven't decided how I'm gonna paint and finish this up yet so I didn't show you that because I just don't know what I'm doing yet but I will in another video so here we go i'm just going to keep rolling i think if you really wanted your wall to be straight you should probably measure and uh, maybe make some chalk lines on there <laughs> that'd probably be a good idea but i didn't and you know learn from my mistakes so guys that is that thank you guys so much for watching don't forget you can find all of these products on my website at windmillvintagescience.com. Once again, you guys are awesome. And don't forget, only you can make it happen. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you in the next videos. Tell me what you think of both these projects. See ya.